Well, let's turn our attention to the Dallas Cowboys. They have a new wide receiver, T.Y. Hilton, after spending his career with the Indianapolis Colts, is now with the Dallas Cowboys. What can we realistically expect from T.Y. Hilton now as a member of the Dallas Cowboys going forward? That's an interesting question because he's like 33 years old. Um, he had a lot of he had a back issue, he had a leg issue, a quad, and those kinds of things. And uh, so you try to figure out, you know, what do you have? What does he have left? If you're looking for the 25 year old T.Y. Hilton, you're not going to get that. But I think he's going to be better than James Washington, and I think he's going to be better than Jalen Tolbert. And what does that mean? Not a whole lot. I would say if you get 10 catches out of him in the next four games, you're good. So Cal- <laughs> my expectations are kind of low. Sure, and I, I think that that's fair. Obviously, this isn't the top of the receiving core ex- uh, addition that folks kind of were hoping for. But within that vein, Jerry Jones has kind of kept this Odell Beckham Jr. thing alive. How much do you actually believe the idea that Odell Beckham Jr. could be of any help to this team through throughout this season or postseason of this year? Uh, zero. <laughs> I mean, Beckham, Beckham's got one leg, bro. He's got one leg. He, you know, he worked out. He he visited three teams, right? Mm-hmm. Visited New York team that drafted him, place that he loves. Who would love? Who wouldn't love New York, right? And then he didn't. He didn't work out for them, right? Then Buffalo, who's like the favorite in the AFC, next to Kansas City. So Josh Allen, you got you got Diggs, you got a fantastic play caller, and you got everything you want. Buffalo it didn't work out for them. And he comes to Dallas. You got Jerry Jones. You got the market of the Cowboys. They're taking courtside to the Mavs' uh, Suns game. You got Micah. You got Dave. You got all these guys. Dak. All these stars. Didn't work out for them. And he's not playing this year. Jerry's a great promoter. One of the best promoters in sports history. And Odell's not playing this year. Odell's going to be playing for somebody else next year. And I don't think it'll be with Dallas. I want to follow up on that. What did you ultimately think now that all this appears to be over now with, you know, Odell Beckham Jr. and the Cowboys? What did you make of this whole ordeal over the last, I would say, what, month now when it came to all of this and his prospects of possibly playing here? Uh, I think it was uh, interesting. It was a lot of fun to, to talk about it and to talk over it. It was fun to be a paparazzi at the Magic game a couple <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> that was pretty fun. But, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, once the Cowboys examined his knee and saw this is the second ACL surgery and that he's not expecting to play in the regular season, and, and you, you look, when you get in the playoffs, you're, not, you're guaranteed one game. So you're taking a shot that you can get him in the postseason that you're going to get to the Super Bowl to get four games out of him. And, and he wants uh, a multi-year contract. I think the Cowboys did the right thing by not, you know, signing him at all um, because I don't think he's ready to play right now. I think that's just the reality of it, but it was a lot of fun to watch. Now, Calvin, our friend here, Kevin, you know, asked the question before this Texans game if the Odell Beckham Jr. noise and circus would be some level of distraction to this team. While I don't think that it was, clearly you got a, a, a less than stellar result from this team, or like a uh, performance rather. What do you think played into the way that these, these Cowboys played on Sunday? I wouldn't think it would be a distraction because uh, the Cowboys are pretty good at handling the distractions with this particular group. But the Cowboys lack the star power. They don't have anybody that moves the needle. You know, Micah maybe a little bit, but even his star power has dimmed a little bit. Dak's a good guy. You know, Zeke doesn't, you know, he doesn't go out to Vegas as much as he used to. You know, uh, Lawrence, is, DeMarcus Lawrence is a family guy. They don't they need star power. That's what they don't have. That's what they would have gotten with Odell Beckham. Um, say he would have played in that Houston game. Would he, would he have made a difference? Probably. But as but when, when your boy muffs the punt and dacks those two interceptions, there's only so much Odell could do, right? So I think the best thing that they did, as I said before, is not sign Odell back in and, and keep it moving. Calvin Watkins of the Dallas Morning News joining us on the Get Right with Reggie KG right here on 105 through the fan via the Diamond Factory Hotline. So as we turn our attention now as they get ready to take on Jacksonville, what do you make of the Cowboys as an overall contender, given what we've seen from them the last three weeks, especially with what happened against the Houston Texans on Sunday? You know, 
you know, sometimes you can win ugly, and that's what you want to take, and I think that's a good thing. But also how you play is another barometer of what kind of team that you are. And I would think that the Cowboys are a, a title contender just based on that game. You know, that same weekend the Eagles played the Giants. The Eagles kicked the Giants' ass, if I can be frank. And that's what the Cowboys should have done to the Texans. You know, if you're a title contender, you beat people that you're supposed to beat. Like you asked me a question, you talked about Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford. In the old days, when you're a professional prize fighter and you're a superior boxer, you knock the other dude's ass out because you're the best fighter in, on, the, on the planet or you're the best fighter in your weight division. Cowboys want to be the best fighter in their division. You're supposed to knock the Texans out. Instead, the Texans, they beat you up all game until you need a 98-yard drive. So you're not getting credit for that win. Now, this week, you're going to go to Jacksonville. You're going to beat Jacksonville and get everyone all happy again for the Eagles game. If you lose to the Eagles game, it doesn't matter. You know, but we can't take you seriously right now. And that's, and that's how I feel about the Cowboys. They're not a serious contender based on that, what I saw against the Texans, based on what I saw against the Lions. And, yeah, the Lions are playing pretty good. But on the field, you have better talent. So show it. Dallas hasn't shown it on a consistent basis. And now they get ready to take on a Jacksonville Jaguars team who has been playing better as of late, especially Trevor Lawrence. Should there be concern about this Cowboys team heading to Jacksonville on Sunday afternoon? I don't want to be that concerned. I mean, you still got the better talent. I mean, yes, you don't have your starting right tackle and, and all those kinds of things. And, you know, I miss my son just dunking a basketball here. Uh <laughs> You should, beat the, you should beat the Jaguars, no doubt. Um, you should beat them handily. Like you were a 17.5-point favorite last week against Houston. How big were you this week? How, what's the point spread this week against the Jags? Do you guys know? I actually don't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right. Look how you played against Houston last week. You know what I'm saying? So you should handle your business, no doubt, uh, against Jacksonville. Just win the game because next week, Christmas Eve, is your championship game against the Eagles, and if you don't win that, then you're not going to win the division, and that means to get to the Super Bowl, you got to do it on the road. Meaning you got to beat Tampa and Tampa, and you might have to beat San Francisco and San Francisco. And if you can't do that, then you bet my brother kept Jason Garrett as your head coach because the best he did was get you to the division around. That's what Mike McCarthy is going to do. Now, Calvin, you just let us know that the young man is hooping right now. Can you just give us a quick breakdown of what, what kind of player he is, what position, what do we talk about here? Uh, yeah, look, man, he's a high school basketball, man. You know, it's high school basketball. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I can do. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if he's dunking, he got a little yeah, hoop to him he's at dunking, least. it sounds like he got a little hop to him. No, he's good. He's like a six. He's like a six foot. Oh, excuse me. He's a six one guard. Gotta say, you gotta, you gotta make them tall than what they are. So he's like a six one guard. Plays for a Centennial High School out here in Frisco. We will play at Panther Creek. He's had a nice little fast break dunk that I, I didn't film. So he, when he sees me, he's going to say, did you film that? And I'm going to say, I hope your coaches did because uh, I was taking care of my boys on the fan. Hey, but, uh, we no, appreciate but, it. But, but, you know, I just, oh, yeah, I called a foul on him. But anyway, uh, he's, a guy, he's a nice little player. He, uh, he needs to work on his ball handling skills a little bit. So hopefully he'll play in college one day and keep it moving. Well, guess what? I'm not going to keep you no more. I'm going to let you, you know, yeah, handle your business. Time out. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> we got enough. Que- we got enough time for one more question. We got KG. enough time for one more question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep it good. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. All right, all right. You, you got it or I got it. You got it. All right, all right. All right. So I'm gonna you let you. You got it. I'm you got it. You, no, I got it. You got it. Uh-huh, we just pass it back and forth. That's how we do. All right. I'm gonna let you go oh, on this one sorry. then. E- easy softball question here for you then. What is Calvin Watkins' favorite Christmas movie? Oh, you know that's a good question. Um, <laughs> You know what? My favorite uh, Christmas movie, it used, to be, it used to be Die Hard, but it's not Bad not a, Santa. Not a Christmas movie. Not, bad not, Santa, not, huh? Not, bad not. Santa? Bad Santa is a Christmas movie. No, no, movie. Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. It, it is. <laughs> okay, but I, but I, picked, but I, I picked Bad Santa. That's what I, I said Bad Santa is my favorite Christmas movie. Okay. All right. All right. Well, Remember let's... Bad Santa? With, uh, what's, who's in it? Um, I forgot his name. I forgot. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton. He's yes, sir. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, Billy Bob Thornton's in there, and uh, the the little person. Uh, he might be dead now. And then John Ritter's in it, and yeah, it's a good movie. I forgot who the the, the female lead was, but she was pretty good. 
You know, you don't like Bad Santa? Uh, it's not on the top of my list. I- I'm more of a it's simple. Not? No, no. You're going to laugh at mine, but I love is it. Anyway. Chris- is, is it Christmas story? No. Okay. No, no, you know what it is? Uh, it's Rudolph of the Red Nose Rain. Nope. Yeah, that's what it is. Nope. Nope. Charlie Brown Christmas? Charlie yeah. Brown Christmas, I know baby. Charlie, oh, Charlie Brown, Brown Christmas. Charlie Brown Christmas. Oh, good. Good, 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 good nice. grief. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 